Hello friends. So let's continue with our example uh, in the Excel spreadsheet. So previously you have seen the column A, which was the original uh, values for X, which is the square feet area, the original sale price in thousands of dollars. Then you have seen why did we standardize both X and the sale price. And you have also seen the column G, which is the y is equal to mx plus b, the predicted sale price. And we started with a random value of m, okay, and random value of b, right? So they are here. And, and we calculated some values, right? Then what we did, we calculated the sum of squared error, which is nothing but the original y. So original y is 0 0.20 after standardization minus 0.75 and the square. Similarly, minus 0 0.60 minus 0.86 and then you square so whatever we got we got and then we summed up everything and this is the error that we got the total error 1.835 then my intention was to change uh, and reduce 1.835 and for that I had to try a new uh, values for M and B okay so I have to calculate M and B so how did I calculate M and B was the new value of M was the old value of M minus the learning rate times the sum of squared error derivative with respect to m and similarly for b and keep repeating this so that it becomes very clear to you the old value of b minus the learning rate the derivative of the sum of squared error with respect to b right so what i did i calculated e which is the so uh, the derivative of uh, the standard error with respect to m and the derivative of f with respect sorry uh, the f column is the derivative derivative of standard error with respect to b okay and we're just plugging this value y minus yp in this case y is the original sale price which is this one this one this one and yp is the previous whatever we calculated okay and then this way we get the calculation for both the gradients okay and then we have used the learning rate of uh, 0 0.01 don't worry about this one we just tried with new value of learning rate you can try with 0 0.05 or directly 0 0.1 but we decided to instead start with a, even a smaller value which is 0 0.01 then what happened was if we then what we got is a new value of m and b the new values are here so 0.45 it got reduced to 0.4246 and B got reduced to 0.6964 from 0.75 okay so these were the original values if you see here okay now that we have a new M and B we again calculated the predicted price and again what we did is simply plugged the new equation of MX plus B and this time it became 0 0.4246 times X plus 0. 6964 right initially it was 0.45x plus 0.75 now we because we took the gradient negative gradient we are trying with a new value and then we also similarly got a new sum of squared error which is exactly the same calculation that we saw here okay so once we got this new sum of squared error the finally when we calculated the new sum of squared error is 1.506 that means I have reduced my sum of squared error by changing the value of m and b okay I hope you have got this so far it is very straightforward we are just plugging new values for m and b and then we are trying to calculate everything again the straight line the sum of squared error okay what's next okay so I'm going to do this again this calculation and this calculation sorry this calculation okay so that I get again some new values of M and new values of B also if you see this will change this will change because now my predicted price has changed so my calculation will change again and I will get a new value of M and B so I'll just keep repeating do the same thing over and over again now I'm not an insane person trust me so I'm not going to do this by hand okay so rather in our next uh, session what we are going to do is we are going to write a python program and see how all these things has been taken care of programmatically rather than i keep doing the same thing over and over and over and again until i get the very minimum value of this you know sum of square error 
I hope you have now understood what's going on inside a gradient descent method. This was just to show you what's possible and how programs can make our life easier. So this is how you can do it by hand. But then in real life world, of course, you would not like to want to do it this way. Of course, this is again a further simplified version because we are taking only one column. Just imagine if we have like 10 columns, 10 predictors, then it will be even more challenging to calculate everything by hand. So that's why we need a program for that. All right. So I hope you have learned something new today and stay tuned. And in our next class, we are going to actually do a Python programming to implement this uh, simple project. All right. Have a great day.